I'm Ian Thomas with Front Office Sports. I'm joined by Adi Kanalik, co-founder of Open Doors. Big moment for Open Doors right now. Right now you guys are launching sort of a new new wave, new product. Yeah. Tell me a little about some of the direction you guys are going in and what sort of what's next for it. Uh, it's been something that we've been working on for probably the last 18 months. Um, you know, it's a culmination of everything that our partners have kind of wanted, needed, requested from us in the last, you know, two years. Uh, it's been super exciting uh, and it's, uh, I think it's going to be a really cool thing as we kind of go into this uh, new world of, of, of serving all of our, you know, uh, you know property, brand and, and, uh, and lead partners uh, with, uh, with our solution but also with uh, the team that we have. You guys have seen really great growth over these last couple of years. I mean, what do you think has been the sort of secret sauce for you in terms of that path that you've been on? Yeah, um, I think just, I mean, I don't know if there's a secret sauce. Uh, there's, I, I would say that uh, I have a solid friendship with my co-founder, Blake Lawrence. So uh, me and him have been fortunate enough to start a company before Open Doors. And so kind of going through that journey and, and just honestly like knowing each other for 10 plus years and being in business now together for nine plus years has kind of allowed us to, to do a lot of things that the way that we want to. And, um, and then because we have such a good relationship and uh, we kind of are very much on the same um, on the same path with our vision, it's allowed us to really surround ourselves with great people and, and, uh, and kind of building um, you know, the, the baby that we have around you know, those types of individuals. So um, at the core, I think what our partners love or what, you know, when we kind of get the unsolicited feedback, it goes back to, I love working with Jeff, I love working with Brandon, you know, I love working with Sam. Um, and I think that that is uh, always a, a good reflection of um, you know, where leadership chooses to take things and what they care about. And so I think we've benefited from kind of having, uh, being aligned on what that means and what it can do for our company and then also hiring around it the, the right way. You guys are sort of right in the center of this athlete to fan direct conversation, teams, uh, leagues, properties, and athletes having that sort of one-to-one -one connection in a lot of ways on social media. Yeah. What do you think is really driving the desire for, for teams and for properties to really sort of look to you guys as a resource to say, let's help sort of deepen those relationships. Let's give our athletes more content to play with and, and make things easier on their ends to build their brands. Yeah, I think, at the, I think what a lot of people are realizing, and this is maybe something that we've been preaching for a long time and the market is kind of catching up to it, is that um, at the, at the core center of all sports, um, you know, whether it's team driven or brand driven or sponsorship driven is the athlete. And the thing that's made it very difficult for people to involve athletes in the past has been accessibility and reliability. And uh, having technology certainly addresses those points. And so I feel that uh, very much the, the future of where we feel like things are going, you know, athlete driven and athletes wanting to be more involved um, having a tool to be able to execute on that is, is really what's kind of a lot of, a lot of these leagues and, and, and brands and, and, and teams to say, you know what, let's use, utilize our players, um, let's help them you know, build our brand but also build their brands in, in, at the same time. And I think that without technology that scale just wouldn't have been possible. So even if, if people would want to, wanted to do this you know, uh, five, ten years ago, uh, I, I think that accessibility just wouldn't have, you know, wouldn't have been around. I know Open Doors works with all different kinds of sports, all yeah. different kinds of properties, big to small and in between. I mean, how critical do you think this is for some of the smaller sports brands out yeah. there that are trying to gain traction, or even maybe sports like hockey, where the players don't have the same profile as, say, their NBA players sometimes? Yeah, so I think it's, when we first started this whole thing, um, you know, some of the brands that we were working with, you know, we were trying to change the, the kind of existing mindset, which was I have to, in order to work with an athlete, to have a relationship, to, to do an endorsement, uh, to have impact, have effectiveness in campaigns, I needed to spend a lot of money and, you know, you had to do it with the Tom Brady's or the Peyton Manning's, you know, with the big names. But um, what we realized is athletes of all, you know, whether of all sports and, and uh, whether they're the starting quarterback or, you know, they're, they're a kicker, um, they had influence too. And so making that connection, and again, it goes back to the accessibility. And so there is, we've had, you know, we've had these proof cases time and time over again where uh, an athlete with, you know, 10,000 followers often ends up having more engagement metrics than a guy with 100,000 followers. 
And that's just because that passionate, you know, fan base of the athlete with a smaller following, they're just, they're fully involved with that person, they're loyal to him. So then when brands are able to, you know, build a campaign with 10 athletes, all with 10,000 followers, there's massive amount of impact. And when, when, once the athletes start to realize that um, and kind of the ecosystem start to realize that, I think that's when you start to kind of see things take off and people say, hey, let's get creative with this um, and see what we can do with it. Yeah, and I'm sure there's an element of like B2B data collection that you guys are able to provide there too, where you're not just having this athlete to consumer to fan sort of relationship and helping yeah. to facilitate that, but like you said, telling a league or property and saying, you know, this is what's really working. Let's do more do of that, more, or yeah. maybe we get rid of this campaign, or, or ship things here or there. Yep. Um, I think we still live in a world where you have two types of marketers. You have uh, ones who are, you know, they are innately good at social media. You know, they can, you and I can be sitting here right now, and they're, you know, they're banging out a tweet just that quickly, and, and it's just that's how they react. They're very uh, proactive in communicating, and uh, and certainly those people who are using our tool, you know, have success. Uh, but then there's the other marketers who uh, they have the title um, they're maybe more so on the you know owning the performance and the responsibility of growing set channels and whatnot who are a little bit more calculated in their approach and so um, i think it's just understanding that those are both strengths uh, to have and understanding how you can leverage tools to allow your you know yourself to scale your abilities um, and that's kind of you know something that we continue to analyze and say hey um, let's build tools for both parties and uh, let's make their lives you know easier you know both from a um, you know sharing content to you know tracking content and, and its performance.